Hi, I'm Daniel. In this tutorial, I would like to show you how to use Niagara debug interface for greater visualization of your more advanced behaviors of the particles. So, in this example, I have a lot of particles that are always pointing with this blue line to the closest position on any surface. So, let me show you how it works. Okay, so here in my system I have two emitters, but for now let's focus on this one. So, I have a simple spawn rate, some velocity, gravity force, and two custom scratch plots I made. But for now, let's start with this one. So this one is the, actually the, the one uh, that is calculating these blue lines between the particles and distance field. So here at the bottom, I'm calculating those position uh, using distance fields. I'm doing this three times for greater uh, precision. And here I'm using my particle position and this uh, close position on, on distance fields to draw the line. But if you want to use this node, you need to have this debug draw interface. So you need to type, click here and type for uh, debug draw or press the plus icon, go to make new data interface and we can uh, click it here. So from this node, I can call a lot of functions like draw box, draw circle, cone, cylinder, uh, sphere, and a lot of them have this persistent name, but I will talk about this later. So for now, just skip it. So. Uh, I'm using my debug draw interface, I called this function. From here, I can set the color of my lines, send at end posi position, which is my uh, distance fields position, my particle position that I have to transfer to vector, and this execute node. Execute node means to enable it or disable it. So inside my system, I have this, this uh, value assigned to my user parameter, and from here, I can uh, using this tick, enable it or disable it, this debug view. So that's very helpful if you are working on distance fields or any other type of particles that needs to show you the line between two positions. But let's go to example number two. Okay, so here is my second example. So I have this draw sphere module, which basically is drawing a debug sphere over each particle position. So here I have this draw sphere debug, execute, the center, which is just basically position of particle, the radius of the sphere, number of segments, which mean a complexity of the mesh, and the color. So there is one uh, thing that might be uh, tricky to understand at the first. So if I add more particles, like maybe 500, you will start to see that all, a lot of those particles are losing th this debug. That because there is a maximum number that the debug, a debug can, can be drawn at once. But you can press on this uh, draw sphere module and here you can overwrite this number. So I can type like a very big number. And as you can see, every particle now have its own debug. But there is a reason why it exists. So be careful with that. Okay, so let's talk about persistence debugs. So, I have a here this cone that is pointing to my simulation positions. And what's the difference between this cone, which the, between this persistence cone and the standard cone? So basically, persistence is static. It's gonna be drawn only once and then it's gonna persist from frame to frame. Where other debugs are more dynamic, they will be drawn each frame. So, for example, here I have this cone, which is a drawing on my simulation position and standard code. So this one can be updated each frame. This one can have a different value each frame where this one cannot. So I cannot add uh, like a offset to my position in fr each frame. I cannot do any math operations here. I cannot uh, disable it or enable it like height or, or end show by this debug because there is no debug. The only way is to make a switch. I will talk about this in a moment. And also, this one does not need any particles to exist. So I can disable my particles and it will be still here. Uh, I cannot have it inside my emitter update or spawn. It can only be on a particle stages. And let's go back here. And if you want to have this debug to be shown or hide, you need to add the switch. So basically, let's type static switch then select instead of bool type to uh, enum constant and here at the bottom select the function debug state 
then press the plus icon, come on, and you gotta parameter them up. And then you can plug there's uh, their version without debug and version with debug. And this will add you this uh, eye icon to your system. If you cannot see this icon, just quit the uh, Niagara system and open it again. Okay, one more thing. If you are using this switch, you cannot call this value to be switched by blueprint. So if you want to be able to switch this value by blueprints, like to show and hide your debug, you need to use those simple dynamic uh, functions with this execute value. And then you can do the same thing as I did here. So I have my execute as an input, and then I'm overwriting it by my user parameter. So inside my blueprint, I can use this Niagara uh, particle system and set Niagara variable bool to uh, overwrite my user show debug parameter. So you need to type user dot and then name of your parameter by blueprint value. So this way I can show and hide my debug by blueprint. But you cannot do this if you are using this switch. So be careful. Okay, and here is my last debug. So this one is gonna change the color if the simulation position is inside the threshold of my particle range. So basically here I have a circle that it's always facing the camera. And this is very helpful to a lot of stuff. So let's go inside. Here I'm calculating the position between par the distance between position and simulation position. And if it's uh, lower than my radius, it's gonna change the color to to green and here is my draw circle but as uh, you can see for my x axis and y axis i'm overwriting it by my camera query and view up vector and view right vector so this gonna make this debug to always face the camera because uh, we, without this it's gonna be on a flat surface so that's it and thank you for watching